Alright guys, uh, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So we're going to be taking a look at the car again. I updated the textures and just a few other things, but uh, we'll be taking a look at the shift controls. Uh, there is some limitations with it. I tried blocking the A and S key controls for the vehicle, but uh, without the drive controls, for surfing, uh, you can't go up and down blocks, at least not without movement vector, and it's just a little bit too complicated. So basically, right now, it's technically in neutral, but it can be still moved. And that's just something to keep in mind when working with any entity, because obviously Minecraft doesn't have cars normally, so you're going to be running into a few different issues. So... Obviously we need gas, we're going to put that in, and then we can hit the shift key, and depending on what direction we want to go, uh, if we have it all the way up the bar, uh, then we can basically go in reverse. If we want to go forward, then we can basically just tap the space key, and then we can go forward. So there's five different gears, and uh, each one goes a little bit faster about um 0 0.5 faster so obviously with the um w key you can go a lot faster than the attended speed which is the only downside to it that was actually really close but um yeah that's the only downside to it is i can't disable the wasd keys i wish there was a way through global procedure so you could just cancel it but it's just not possible at least right now i'll talk to the devel developers and see if they can't um make a condition for global procedures for basically keystrokes or something like that but uh we'll see i'm not sure if that it's not a guarantee that it will happen but but yeah outside of that there's a lot of script that actually went into changing this so um basically that's all it is, it's just a simple gearbox that you can change the speed of the entity and you can go down using the little bar indicator too. So if you want to go in reverse, you can go in reverse. So yeah, outside of that, uh, let's go into mCrater and just cover the code that's been changed. All right, so we'll take a look at uh, some changes in the procedures first so we have internal spawn and the internal spawn one that we had before we have three new variables that are mbt variables that we're basically using so max vehicle gear which is our basically our gears between the up and down and then our uh, minimum gear vehicle or minimum vehicle gear which is going to determine which is the reverse uh, value so then we have our vehicle gear, which is what the default gear of the vehicle being in. So we need these three extra variables. This is from the fuel tutorial. If you haven't watched that, go watch it. And it explains how to add fuel efficiently to the actual vehicle itself. So these are the three new blocks. And then under update tick, we have basically split the uh, system from one procedure to three just so it's a little bit easier to understand our main procedure here is basically going to be calling each one of these uh, procedures that are for the shifter the fuel consumption and the fall and stop script so those are under these ones right here and the fuel script nothing has changed far as i know um yeah, I don't think anything has changed here. Uh, oh, no, uh, we did add uh, a condition for uh, testing if the gear is basically uh, above or below um, zero. So basically, if the, the value is above or below zero, what it's going to do is it's going to basically make the entity drain the fuel. So this is another condition that it's going to basically take in consideration is if, if the gear is above. So if the fuel is maximum, if it's being ridden, and if the gear for the entity is above uh, or below, so if it's in reverse or if it's in drive. Uh, if it's in zero, then it's going to be technically in neutral, not going anywhere, unless you're like moving it with your feet. 
but for that reason I would probably set the movement speed if possible for the entity I haven't tried that but setting the movement speed of the entity to zero might prevent the car from moving um, I haven't tried it again but the this the speed itself can be controlled under the entity we'll take a look at that in just a second so that's the only change that I can see in here. Uh, I did add a note for this block right here. So there's that. Uh, the car shifting script, this is actually probably the most simplest one. So what this does is it basically calculates, uh, it uses that variable from the gear. So we're testing for the gear, we're applying it to a string value, and then we're going to be testing for the gear itself. So what gear it's in. And then what we're doing is we're basically overriding the actual gear itself. So these values, the divided by is basically any value that's higher is going to be a lot slower. Generally, you don't want it to go too close to like one or whatever, it would be going very fast. Maybe you want it for a sports car, but not something like a small coupe or something. Um, I generally found six and offsetting it by 0 0.5 is generally of good distance. Um, but you can adjust the values to what you need uh, for the vehicle itself. And for the reverse one, which is negative one, we've set six. So this is basically gear five, which is fastest speed, where gear one is the slowest speed. And then we have zero, which is neutral, which is just setting the override for the entity itself. So that's basically it for that one. The fall and stop speed or script. Uh, this basically controls the previous um, script that we had for the fuel. So when the engine doesn't have any fuel, it should basically turn off. Now there is one extra condition in the script. Uh, what it's doing is it's going to test if the gear is not zero and it's going to set it to zero. So only if the fuel is um, less than zero or the entity is not being ridden. So that's the only difference that is in that particular part. There is an expansion onto the script which is going to basically control uh, the drop force of the entity. So basically what this uh, does is it's going to basically calculate um, if the entity is basically moving or whatever. So if it's being ridden, if the gear is not in zero, and then what we're doing is we're testing a few different factors. Uh, the first one is if it's a fluid where the, the entity is below the block. So we're checking for the distance. And then we're checking if there is or if there is air. So if there's those two things or if there is not a solid block uh, with the uh, up face as being solid. So if that's another condition and that it's not marked under a specific tag which can all be configured up here. So uh, basically the two different values or the three different values that have been changed is the tag. So if there's a configuration for this tag right here, forge vehicles slash solid block. So basically any blocks um, that you want to blacklist from the entity falling through, uh, such as leaves, uh, grass paths, anything with not a solid face or solid block, then you would want to set add them to this particular tag. Uh, the gear, obviously that's the tag name that we're basically going to be testing for the gear itself, and the drop force is this value. Now generally you want to use any value that is above uh, one or above. So uh, the higher it is, the more force that there will be, so it might take more damage if it's falling off a cliff. Uh, the problem with the script using movement vector is the car could actually technically fly straight. So this script right here, basically what it does is it's going to make sure this, the car basically clips to the ground. So it's not going to basically consider it as a flying vehicle and start flying straight off into the air when it's going down a cliff or whatever. What it's going to do is this is going to force the entity to stay on the ground when it's going down on train or going up train and stuff like that. So this is actually really important for that one. So those are the three scripts. Uh, nothing else has changed under the update tick. Uh, the tag again for the 
parts that we've added. I've added one for blocks. So I've added all the different leaf types and I've added grass path. I noticed that those two particular things have issues with um, the entity falling through it. So I basically added support for it. You might need to add different blocks uh, for it, but generally any mods that want to add support for the vehicles and stuff like that should be putting it under this tag. Um, things like stairs even maybe, I'm not sure, but it might be something to consider. All right, so as far as that's considered, all of those things should be the same. Uh, let's check the right click. Um, yeah, this hasn't changed. The right click hasn't changed. And the only other difference is keybinds. So we have, you can ignore that one. I was just experimenting with trying to disable it, but it doesn't work that way. So the shifter is basically going to do a few different things. This is just a vehicle shifter. And then I'll put it under a category. So key dot categories dot vehicles. So this just basically puts the uh, controls under there. And then what I've done is I've created a on key pressed and a on key release. Now we're using a custom parameter that's built into the key binds. So it's called pressed MS or milliseconds. So we will be using that parameter in the procedure for the release to basically determine the um, how long the player basically holds down the key and if we should put it in a reverse value or a um, forward, like increase the value for the gear shift or reverse it. So we can use one key bind using this method. So let's take a look at the key pressed uh, first. And this just basically, all this does is we're going to use a global variable called key released. So the key, the, the global variable, we have two keys here, key released, which is a logic variable, player lifetime, and it's set to true. And then we have a key re released message. This is a string player lifetime, and it has no value by default. So these are two, um, particular global variables that we need for the script to work. Uh, localization, the categories one is right here. All I've basically did was add the vehicle's name for the control, the, the section in the control. So basically when we're setting our key binds, uh, it will be under this particular uh, name for the settings. So outside of that, going back to the procedure, what we're doing is we're basically going to test if the player is writing. So every time you see event slash target entity, that is going to be targeting the player, not the vehicle. Anytime that we want to test for the vehicle, we need to set a entity variable, local variable right here. And this is called vehicle entity. And then we're going to test get entity of the player is writing. So basically we're going to assign the player writing entity to the local variable and then we can easily test for everything after that. So it's basically modular. All I'm doing is adding a progress bar of just like a display to basically indicate how everything works. Now the wait time is going to vary depending on uh, what, how long they actually press. Now by default, um, I would probably keep everything the same because there is exactly 10 different bars and each will go through one a one tick on the server side. Uh, this will equal out to about 50 milliseconds in the um, the time that we actually need to switch over the script to reverse. So if you're going to double this to two, uh, obviously the wait time is going to be a lo lot longer. So between the bars, but this would also uh, require the milliseconds to be increased to a total of 1000. So keep that in mind when you're actually adjusting these as this is going to be the value and obviously milliseconds, um, 500 milliseconds, there's like w in one second, uh, there is 20 ticks, but in milliseconds, that is 1000 uh, for the value for milliseconds. So if you're dividing it by 10, so 10, 10 progress bars, then you're going to need to set it to half the number of milliseconds for it to be working properly for the display. So keep that in mind as well. 
So after we're basically testing if the entity is part of the vehicle car um, tag group. So if that's true, then what we're doing is we're going to make sure the key released is set to false. So this is going to make sure that when we're pressing it, it's going to be able to be switched between the player uh, pressing the key and it will automatically know when to cancel all this. Uh, so it won't just continue being shown. So every time that we run this wait procedure, uh, what we're doing is we're going to print a message and then we're going to test if the um, variable for the global for the global procedure for the key released is not true. So basically if it's false still. And every time it does this, it will go through. Now if the player changes it to true by releasing the key, then what it's going to do is it's going to cancel out any of the following wait blocks and just um, basically print out other messages. So that's basically how it works. A little hard to grasp, but we can't use local variables in here because the wait box don't support them. So that's why I'm using global variables. Okay, so last part is the release key. This one's a little bit more complex, but it's, I'll explain it. Again, we're testing if the entity of being the player is being written, and then we're applying the entity that is writing to the entity itself. And then we're going to test again if the vehicle or the entity is under the car tag. So basically if it's under that tag, then what we want to do is assign our local variables. These are our local variables. We have one for entity, three for the uh, values for the gear. We have um, vehicle gear, maximum vehicle gear, and minimum vehicle gear. Those are assigned here. And then what we're doing is we're going to make sure that the entity for the player has the global key released variable set to true. So that's going to run automatically. Uh, the custom block right here, which is for the dependency pressed MS, we're testing if it's equal to or greater than 500. So basically if it's equal or greater than 500, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we increase or decrease the value to revert like down on the gear scale. So we're just basically testing for the gear if it's uh, the gear of the car is greater than the minimum gear. So if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the, uh, the vehicle gear and then we're going to get the vehicle gear and then we're going to subtract by one and that will just bring the gear number down by one. So then what we're doing is we're going to basically apply our uh, string variable key released message. This is the global um, message variable for basically printing it out. And then we're going to set now in gear and then we're going to print out the, the gear of the vehicle entity to the vehicle, um, the, the key release message. Then we're just going to use that particular global variable in the message string here. We're going to put it to the action bar. Uh, now, if this, if the value of the, um, if the gear is already in the lowest gear that it could possibly be going in, so if this part doesn't return true, it's just going to delete the message. So basically, clear it. Now, the other one down here. So if it's above or if it's not above 500 uh, milliseconds, then what it's going to do is run this particular script. What this one does is it tests if the, the gear is less than the maximum gear. So basically this is the one that goes up. So then what we're doing is we're going to set the entity, the vehicle entity uh, for the MBT gear, and then we're setting the MBT gear plus one. So that will increase the value plus one. Now this is the part where the global message release part is actually really uh, mandatory. We need to use a global variable in order to use it in the wait block. We can't just put this in with a local variable because it won't simply work. So we need to use a global variable for that. That's why we have a message key release message variable here. Um, basically the same thing as this up here. No nothing's actually really different as far as I can tell, but the only difference is we have a wait block here to basically delay it by two ticks that uh, is in place so the message isn't 
automatically deleted when the entity releases the key because there is about a one tick delay for the message for the progress bar. So you need to delay it by two ticks or double the amount that your ticks are, um, or at least one tick over the amount that your tick for your progress bar is shown. So again, our progress bar has a one tick value where this has a two tick value. So it's just plus one for that value. So outside of that, uh, same thing, if it's um, at the maximum value, what it's going to do is it's just going to clear the action bar and that's it. So literally those are the changes that I've done for the vehicle themselves. Nothing has really changed otherwise. So uh, the next major project that I'm going to be working on is steering. Now, before we go, uh, I just want to check one little thing for the entity. See if there's anything major changes that I've done in here. I don't think there has been any changes. Um, I did adjust the speed, I think, last episode. But the speed, let's try disabling the speed. So we're fully dependent on the movement vector of the entity and we'll see if that works. Uh, particles, that's all the same. No extra procedures, everything's the same as far as I can tell for the entity. So we'll set the speed down and then I'll pop in game again and we'll just quickly see if that can prevent the uh, movement forward and reverse keys for that. And if it does work, then obviously you wanna do that. All right, we're in game, and yes, it actually does work this uh, this way. So if we wanted to go ahead and set the speed to zero for the movement speed for the entity, then what we can do is we can override the W and um, S keys uh, appropriately. So right now I'm pressing down the W key. Car is in neutral, so it's not going anywhere. And now I'm pressing the S key, it's still not going anywhere. Uh, if we press the gear one, then it moves in motion. So we can go up blocks as well, which is the main function that we actually need the um, entity being able to strive uh, forward and stuff. And reverse works as well, so we can go back and reverse. So that will actually fix it. A last minute thought that I had, so um, we can basically do that. So outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.